Hello! Welcome back to another episode of Road Tripping with Rachel. Today I am going to be talking about antiques and why I like to have antiques and a little bit of why I decided to thrift, but I hope you will enjoy this channel. I like to road trip through the Bible, through life, and then a little bit of me actually going on some road trips as well. So come along with me for the ride. Okay, so I happen to love antiquing. I also love to thrift. I grew up going to antique stores with my parents when I was younger. And then as I moved out of the house, I started to get into thrifting, mainly because like I was a broke student. <laughs> and so being able to go and find some of the things that I was looking for to outfit my house or apartment, and then to be able to find like inexpensive clothing items was also really helpful. So there are a couple reasons why I still continue to thrift today. So 10 years or more later and why I really enjoy having antiques. So I'm just gonna go through some of my reasons with you right now and hopefully you'll be able to take some of them and you'll be able to learn to love antiquing and thrifting too. So my first thing is finances, <laughs> okay? Um, if you're gonna go to a thrift store or even when you're antique shopping, you can probably find what you're looking for at a much discounted price. <laughs> much more limit, and let me rephrase that, you can find what you're looking for probably at a steeply discounted price. Now, I think it's important that we understand there is a very big difference between thrifting and antiquing, okay? Uh, whenever you are going to a thrift store, most of the time if you're going to a place like Goodwill or you're going to a Savers, um, or if you're going to more of like a, um, a thrift st store that might be like, almost like a church rummage sale, um, you need to understand that you have to be willing to dig. And with that, that means you need to go in kind of with an idea of these are the things that I'm legitimately looking for and have an idea of what you're going to be shopping for and what you're willing to spend. And like I said, be prepared to dig. Um, I live pretty close to the St. Louis area now. And well, when I say pretty close, within an hour and a half to two hours that's close. And so Goodwill does do like bins shopping. In that case, like I don't show up to that unless I got gloves and I got a mask. Okay. And really I don't go there very often. I would rather go into just a local store and go look around, but always go in with a plan. Two, you need <laughs> to uh, be aware that whenever you go into a thrift store, you're looking through everything and it's going to be mixed together and it's just stuff that people didn't want in their homes anymore and they've just donated it. If you're going into a thrift store, you need to understand that that is stuff that has been curated. So what that means is typically when we're talking an antique store, your dealers, the individuals who are signing, who are actually selling stuff, um, most of the time antique dealers will work on commission. So what that means is they rent a space and then they curate the items that go into that space. So whenever you purchase an item, you are purchasing from an individual seller and your antique store is acting as the go between between you and that seller. So most sellers um, tend to be not all the time, but they tend to be people who have um, kind of a his, uh, like a historical background. They'll, they will have a design background. They're going to come from um, a business mindset of it. And so they have gone through and they have curated what they are selling to appeal to particular buyers or to sell a very specific item. I used to work for an antique store and we had a dealer there who just dealt in depression glass. That was it. And so he knew what the pieces were worth, he knew what they could be sold for, and he knew um, his market. So he had competitive pricing. And also like you could go in and you would pay, you know, six, seven, eight, nine dollars for a dessert plate. But the people who were very dedicated to that, he would be able to sell, you know, full sets of this. So that way he would be able to make a profit. He only had to sell a few pieces of glass every month in order just to make his rent on his booth. And then anything he made above and beyond that then was just money in his pocket once he paid off his initial investment. So understand that when we're talking about the difference between thrifting and antiquing. So why do I continue it? Uh, one, I already said it, finance. <laughs> it is finances. Um, I'm willing to go through and do the digging 
and then I'm willing to go in and look at something that's been curated for me. So depending on what it is I'm looking for, I might do either one of them. In this particular weekend, I had the opportunity, I went antiquing. So I went um, with a few things in my, mainly because I wanted to get out of my apartment and it was really nice, but it was rainy. I say nice because it's been like 100 plus degrees here in Missouri for the last week. And so for me, nice meant like, hey, we're not in the hundreds or the 90s. We're in like the 70s and 80s. Who cares if it's a torrential downpour at this point? So uh, I went to two different antique stores this weekend. One's on Saturday, one on Sunday. And I'll share those with you later. But um, finances. So uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, I've said it before in these videos, I'm a bit of a tightwad. So I like what I like and then um, but I am not going to pay through the nose for it. I am probably going to see if I can find it thrifted or if I can find it antique. And if I can't find it either of their way like that, then that is when I'm going to start to explore new options. Um, so because I like to hoard my coin. <laughs> Two, um, for me, the big thing is also going to be that I believe in recycling. <laughs> now, um, I am not one of those people who is going to be on reduce, reuse, recycle, upcycle, um, like keep on using it until it just can't be used anymore. Now, I am not um, that degree of a recycler, but I am a big believer in like, let's go on, let's use something until it's worn out or it can no longer fulfill the purpose that it is meant to fulfill. In which case, then maybe we can find a new purpose for it or if we can... If that doesn't work, then maybe we can find someone else who would be able to appreciate it. Or worst case scenario, if it's an electronic, like let's strip the stuff in it and get the copper out of it. Like, and then like worry about the other stuff. So that's for me, like I like keep being able to keep things from going into the dumpster or going into, you know, just like a landfill. I, I feel like I'm rescuing things, so to speak. Also, for me, um, another big reason that I really enjoy antiquing and thrifting is because I like to have an eclectic home. So my apartment, I've posted some pictures if you follow me on Instagram of my apartment, but as a whole, like I tend to have a bit of a mid-century modern meets farmhouse vibe, and that comes across pretty strongly. Um, I do have some pieces that I got from my grandparents as well as some piece, uh, piece that my father has made, um, you know, back in the 70s. And then I do have some antiques that are spread around my apartment. I'm also a really big believer in the importance if you go antique shopping, I don't buy stuff that I don't actually see myself living with. So for example, um, I have some Pyrex bowls. I love Pyrex, by the way. Um, I also think it's like stupid expensive to get the vintage things. So what I really enjoy doing is I will walk around the antique stores or the thrift stores. And if I find a piece, um, that's not necessarily a part of a set. It's just a random bowl or it's, um, something like that, that someone has just donated or gotten rid of. In those cases, I will purchase it because they are just such good quality that for me, it's worth the investment in it because I know I'm going to be using it for a long, long time. Hands down. Um, another really big reason that I really enjoy, in this case, antiquing over thrifting is because sometimes you really, you do take a chance whenever you go thrifting if you don't know what you're looking for. Like I said, I worked for an antique mall. I became um, pretty well versed in knowing what I was looking at. Now I am not an expert. I would never do like an appraisal on anything for anyone, but I know what I'm looking at most of the time if we're talking things that are within kind of my realm of interest. So mid-century farmhouse, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, that kind of thing. So for me, like I know what I'm looking at when it comes to decorating and buying things for my home that I'm actively going to be using. So um, I also believe in quality. So um, I will pay more for quality items that I know are going to last a very long time. So for example, this was one of my uh, antique finds this week. I am extremely excited about this. I actually had to wash it before putting it on here, but this is a club skillet. So I don't know if they still make club, but um, my mother has club pans that she's had for many, many years. And then for Christmas a couple of years ago, my parents actually got me a set of club pans that are from, I believe, the 60s. Um, they're beautiful. They're pink. Um, they come in sets. Um, and so I have three out of a four piece set. I'm 
uh, actively looking for the Dutch oven that would match it. But I have another set of club pans that I actually inherited from my grandmother. Um, so they were the set that she actually got whenever her and my grandfather got married in the 50s. And I have a Dutch oven and then three other small like saute pans and like um, sauce pans that go with it. And since I have had them, I have actually managed to find this is the second skillet I have found that goes with the set. And I have another skillet and, and I have a small like omelet sized skillet that I have gotten and added into my set, which is really exciting for me. So I've actually managed to build on my grandmother's set. And for me, um, one, it's, it's an heirloom for me. Um, and so being able to contribute to that is very exciting for me because it's something that eventually I'll be able to pass down to someone else in my family. But I like these because these are from like probably I would I would just take a guess and say probably somewhere in the 60s it's very well taken care of um you can see from the bottom this really wasn't used very often so the poor lady who originally um was given this apparently was not a good cook <laughs> um now they are aluminum so I know some people don't necessarily love aluminum but these are quality items they're worth the investment and if you manage to find them at a thrift store or an antique store they are worth paying the money for so I believe it's important in making a financial investment in the things that you're going to be using all the time. I actually have a pan I picked up from Walmart several years ago. I'm actually thinking I will probably be donating it soon because I now have much better quality of items that are a part of my kitchen. So, and that gets to my other point is buy stuff that's going to last. I'm going to sound like I'm going to be harping on something right now. And I am to some degree, but don't spend your money on things that can just be easily tossed away. The one and done things, like they have their purpose, you know, toilet paper, yes, by all means, get rid of it. But there are um, a lot of things that we use in our daily life that we don't necessarily need to purchase one and be done with it. We can go on ahead and make the investment and have something that we're going to use on a regular basis or something that we're going to be able to use multiple times and get our money's worth out of it. So for me, that is most definitely my club pan, but that is also going on ahead and investing in pieces for my kitchen that are going to be um, things that I'm going to keep for a long time. So another item that I recently acquired over this weekend that I was very excited about is a Pyrex measuring cup. Now this is a one cupper. Um, so yeah, this is a newer one. Like it is not antique at all, but you don't find good glass one cup measuring cups very often <laughs> anymore. Um, these were more popular, you know, 20 years ago or so when I was younger, but I was very excited to find this because I actually have a purpose in mind for this. I've been learning a uh, sourdough. I've posted on my channel before that I was defeated by it at one point, but I have recently taken up the challenge of experimenting with the sourdough again. So I have a starter going, I have managed to bake bread and I have made two rounds of bagels. One really turned out well, one kind of turned out. I mean, they're edible. They're edible. Um, but uh, this is something that I'm very excited about because it's going to become a constantly used item that's going to be in my kitchen. So if you're going to, you know, spend the money, make it be something that you're going to use and it's something that you can live with. I really, um, me personally, I'm not much of like a tchotchkes kind of person. Um, don't get me wrong. I have my collectibles. I have things that I really like and that I enjoy. They're a part of my decor, but I don't typically have a lot of things that just take up space that I'm not going to be able to actively live with. I like to be able to use my stuff that I thrift or use the stuff that I have found um, at antique stores and have it be just a natural part of my life. Um, probably an example of something that I've gotten that's just purely decorative that I really enjoy are these horses that you can see behind me. Um, I am uh, Swedish, actually. Um, my family, I'm mostly German um, since we've been in the United States, um, or hands 57, as my grandmother used to say. But um, my last name um is what it is now because of my family coming over from Sweden. So I do take some pride in the fact that I'm Swedish. So I do have um, two Dalla horses. This one I actually found on a trip um, that I took earlier this year. And this other one, my parents actually got me for Christmas last year. So that is something I have out on display that just because I really like it and it just makes me happy 
to have out. Um, I have a few other items in my apartment that I genuinely, I just like. I have an antique clock um, that has to be wound every week. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I forget. But um, it is something though that it helps me keep time. I can live with it. I have some vintage lens that go out on my kitchen table. Um, like I've said, I have Pyrex bowls. I actually have two full sets um, that I have found um, or been able to piece together over the last couple of years. One set I actually bought all together because like I said, and working at Antique Mall, you also learn very quickly that although you will have dealers who will um, specifically curate collections for people to shop for, or they'll create a specific um, look, sometimes you still get dealers who will get something and they'll make it a part of their general like vibe for their um, booth or for their um, stall or their cabinet or whatever it is that they're selling out of, and they won't necessarily know what they have. So I managed to find one of those items <laughs> and I was able to get a complete set of newer Pyrex bowls. By newer, I mean they're from like the 80s. So they're not like the old, old ones. Um, but they're, they're nice, they're heavy, they're glass, they're heavy duty. So I'm going to be using them for years and years and years. So it was a great investment for me. I have already easily made back the amount of money that I would have spent had I gotten something that was going to be cheap and break easily and be a toss away. But I also want to go ahead and show you some of the finds that I got here um, this past weekend because I'm excited about them. And I know that there is someone who is out there who is going to appreciate these with me. So I've shown you the club pan. Um, now, this is a decorative piece that I'm excited about. It will be really nice for the fall and for Christmas. But I found a big wooden bowl. Um, you can tell that this is very old. It's got some cracks in it. Um, so it is not something like I'm not going to be putting anything like super liquidy in here. Um, actually, my general thought is it will look really nice um, when I have people over to have like either some pumpkins in or in the summer to have like um, limes or lemons or something like that. That will be really pretty and decorative or even have things in here for Christmas. Um, however, like I said, I do like to be able to actively use things. So I try not to get things that are just going to be like purely decor. So I um, could technically use this maybe for bread or something like that. Most likely I would use this probably more for like mixing up granola. Like let's just be honest about it. Now I know there's probably some people out there who would just scandalize that I would ever consider doing that. But um, like this is what it was meant for. It's what it was meant for. And I do have some pieces that I will use um, actually in my kitchen, actively use them and mix things in them. And then I will have, item, and then I will turn around, I will wash it. I'll put it away for a little while and eventually get it back out for, and use it as a part of my decor. Um, I've already shown you my Pyrex cup, which I was really excited about. Um, this, I was actually deliberately on a hunt for this. And that is a lemon reamer. Now, I have one that is plastic. I got it really cheap because I just needed one. Um, I'm probably going to be donating that one. Um, don't get me wrong. It works fine. It really does. Um, but I wanted something that was going to be a bit more sturdy. And I wanted something that was going to work a bit better um, for me whenever I am using different types of citrus. So the one that I have is pretty much just for like lemons. Um, and don't get me wrong, I use quite a few lemons actually in my cooking and in um, some of my baking, but I wanted something that was going to work also for limes and oranges. And I'm not a grapefruit person, but primarily like lemons, limes, and oranges. And this reamer is going to work really well for that. And with it being glass, it is going to be much more sturdy. Um, I've had the other one now for a couple years and like, it's okay. It'll still work. It, it'll be something great for like a college student who is moving out needing something it'll be perfect for them um i was just ready for an upgrade and something that matches more of my general aesthetic uh i am also like i said i've mentioned pyrex a couple of times now but look at this isn't it pretty now i did spend a little bit on this one just because it is in such good condition but oh my gosh it's so pretty <laughs> like look at that color that color um this is beautiful. I'm in love. <laughs> um, this is my third, no, third bowl in this style as far as where it's got the grip and the spout. So these are actually, um, so you can pour. That's why these are here. It also makes it easier. Like you can pick it up and you can pour 
or like if you need to funnel it into something. So I have two more that are designed like this that are not part of a set. And then I have one that is actually a part of a set. I love them for baking bread and using it to let things rise. Sometimes I will make like large quantities of hot rolls or cinnamon rolls. This is wonderful for being able to do that. So I hope uh, to have many, many, many loaves of bread coming out of this because I absolutely am in love. And it just looks so, like it looks so pretty. Like, you just have it sitting on your counter and the bread's rising and you just feel like you're the Susie homemaker. It's like, step aside, Martha Stewart. There's a new, like, homemaker in town. <laughs> it sounds terrible. Sorry, Martha. Sorry. Um, I also, like, I've said I like to use things. I like pretty things. I like things that I um, can use and have and be an active part of my life. Um, I found a dealer this weekend who was just selling depression glass. They had a kind of, you could tell like a little bit of an idea of what they had because of how they had everything priced. It was meant to go as a set. Um, but not a good enough idea that they were charging like a good price for <laughs> like an active price for it, what it should actually have gone for. So ta -da! these are custard cups. I think they're gorgeous. And I think they will look absolutely adorable for ice cream or for parfaits or um, if I ever want to make like a pudding or something like that. Um, I am planning on starting to have people over to my apartment more regularly and this is the perfect size for some of the things that I want to be able to make and be able to serve. Um, I found these as a set of 12. Um, just to put this in perspective, I have seen these with the depression glass dealer that I was talking about. He sells these for about $12 a piece. Okay. Just to put this in perspective, I paid $3 for this. If I had gone through the dealer that I know, I would have had to have paid like 12, maybe more for it. And I was able to purchase 12 of these for $36. This is a steal. And they're pretty. And I have some other depression glass pieces. Um, I am not so devoted to depression glass that I am attempting to put together an entire set. I am devoted enough to it that I am looking for my color, which my color is pink. I'm just telling you. It looks a little orange on camera, but it's pink. That's the color that I ended up with, and I love it. And it all started with a creamer and pitcher that were once part of a tea set. Enough said. Um... Occasionally, I do have a few like accessories that would be considered to be um, vintage in nature. So I have a beaded bag that I have actually taken to a wedding. I have a hat pin, um, and now I and I also have um, I have some older like thrifted bags that I will use as well. Um, I have some scarves. I have some necklaces, but I haven't really done much with hats themselves. I found a hat. I found a hat. Now it's a little dusty. I do need to make sure that this gets cleaned and that it gets cleaned, excuse me, well. Um, but this is a wool sand hat, wool sand hat. Um, it's beautiful. The problem I have is that I have a relative, uh, well, it's not relatively, I have a big head. I just do. Um, my hair has been pulled back since it's last washing, so you can't really see, like, it's full volume. It's kind of deflated right now. But when my hair is in its full glory, like, I have a whole lot of it, and, um, it gets very hot. So I do not have very good luck, like, with hats very often, although I do love them. And I found a vintage hat that fit my head, and isn't it adorable? Oh my gosh, I'm just in love with this. I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But, um... Yeah, I bought a hat this weekend. There you go. <laughs> so uh, that is what I've got. I hope that you've enjoyed this. Because like I said, if you're going to be buying antiques or if you're going to go thrifting, you know, look for quality, consider what you're paying, and make sure that it's something that you can live with. That's what's really important is that you can live with it. And finally, like that you like it. Don't buy something because it's just on sale or you found it at the thrift store and it was a great price. I genuinely like all these items that I've purchased and I like all of the items that are in my home. Um, I've curated a particular look for myself in my house 
um, well, apartment, within my space, I have a particular look and a feeling and a vibe that I find to be welcoming and it's uniquely me. So whenever you are going to go out and go shopping, you know, even if it's like super eclectic and you don't understand how anything's going to fit together, if it is something that you genuinely like and you consider it to be worth the investment, then go on ahead and get it as long as you have the funds for it. I would not um, go out and purchase anything that is going to require me to put things on layaway, even though like I, there is this painting that I'm in love with. Um, I am not putting it on layaway. Like I need to be able to have the funds to just purchase it um, myself. And that you find something that just speaks to you, it speaks to your vibe, it works in your life and within your lifestyle, that is when it is truly worth like purchasing through the thrift store and specifically like going and getting antiques. So hopefully you've enjoyed this in my little um, monologue on why I enjoy thrifting and particularly antiquing and that you enjoyed some of my antique finds from this weekend. This is something I really enjoy doing. I'm probably going to start having this a little bit more often as I get out and go. Um, I tend to thrift a little bit more because it's just more readily available where I'm at. But when I do go into thrift stores, I normally um, go in with intention of finding items. So I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure that you leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That really helps out my channel and it lets me know what kind of content that you're enjoying. And also, I haven't really talked about this on the channel, but I do have a blog that I have started. So a lot of the information that you will find on the blog is also a lot of the information that I am sharing in these videos. I believe I have um, posted about six or seven times now on the blog. So um, they have been following, especially for like the last month, but I also include some additional things in there, especially um, things that I think will be helpful to education overall and about my travels and just sometimes just my general thoughts on a particular thing that is coming up. But I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to having you join me on my next road trip. Bye!